every morning. We have anew the cycle of life. All of this designed and created by him. Encouragement from the creator is scientifically observed not only with the brushing of the wings of the butterfly, the warming of the rays of the sun, the fruitage derived therefrom in the vegetation, and in addition to that, every star in its place is named by him. Every star in its place in every galaxy is counted by him. He numbers them all. In addition to that, he has placed them uniquely so that the greatest number of stars are in galaxies in the farthest reaches beyond Earth, and they diminish in numbers in concentric rings until we get to our own Milky Way galaxy, and the entire universe surrounds us like a cocoon. In Isaiah chapter 40, in Job 104, the Bible states that God stretched out the heavens including the space and the mass in it, including these galaxies and stars, like a tent, like a curtain, and like a tent to dwell in. So all of this is an encouragement from God. Will we be wise enough to recognize that God himself designed all of these wonderful things? Look back at the butterfly. The butterfly flapping its wings, flitting through the forest, invading our lawns, has signals on its wings for us to learn to communicate in a written dimension because God wanted to communicate with us in a written dimension. On uh, An atheist, or at least he was an atheist when he began, an atheist began to photograph the wings of butterflies and found an A and a B and a C and a D, an E and an F and a G and an H and all the way through. I, J, K, L, M, N, and O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, and then the numerics. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the zero on the wings, the beautiful wings of butterflies. So God is enabling us with the suggestion that we should have written communication. And I'm sure, as I've said before on this telecast, that not only do we have the English version and the Arabic but I'm sure we have the Hebrew and the Greek written and suggested in the flutter of the butterfly. But God did something else. He used the human brain with its capacity to encourage us to measure the distance to the farthest stars, weigh the mass of the universe, and interpret the signals given forth by all of these vibrating entities. The human brain alone is able to comprehend and catalog all of these wonderful things. And then, the human mind alone has sought out the geology of the earth, how it fits together, and has found an incredible thing. There is a layer of sedimentary deposit. Sedimentary deposit laid down by fast-moving waters. Sedimentary deposit laid down very rapidly in a short span of time and that layer called the Austin chalk not because it's chalky and soft but because it's very white in its consistency but extremely hard in fact uh, Robert Summers assisted me in the excavation of the first dinosaur that I discovered and the Austin chalk was so consolidated in that area where the dinosaur was discovered that Robert Summert has to, had to use the tools that he sculpted the John Wayne statue from. He had to use those sharp tools to cut through this Austin Chalk Cretaceous layer of limestone and separate the bones. Well, this Austin Chalk layer was first observed in Texas near Austin. That's the reason it's called Austin Chalk. Then observed 1,600 miles observed throughout the continental United States, North and South America. Throughout Europe, this Austin chalk is observed throughout Russia, Scandinavia, uh, throughout Australia, throughout Africa, throughout here, as it's indicated in Israel. It is a global deposit of sedimentary layer showing there was a worldwide flood. And it is interlaced with the other layers with fossils, we call these polystrate fossils, interlacing all these layers together. 
So if we truly are investigative and scientific in our purpose and enterprise, we have a wonderful warm regard from the Creator saying, the facts are written in the earth. Listen, speak to the earth, and it'll tell thee, and of the creatures, and they'll demonstrate that they were created. Every living cell is a mark of splendid creation. The globe in general displays the marks of a history of a worldwide flood as declared and described in the Bible. In the biblical record, we have a scientific statement that is verified in the record of geology. So warm regards from the Creator say, listen, you don't have to obey the past in its chaos and defiance. Warm regards from the Creator state, I sent my Son. You don't have to end up in judgment without hope. You have hope in Him. Let me tell you about Jesus. I've never met anyone like Jesus. Jesus demonstrates the person of God the love of God, the power of God. He raised the dead. He healed the blind. He cared for the sick. Most of all, he went to Calvary and died for our sins. And in his death, he cared about his mother, gave her custody to his disciple, the youngest and the most capable to care for her. In his compassion, he died for the thieves on both sides and illustrated to us his love. Wouldn't you let him in? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right now, believe on him and ask him in your heart, Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. I know I'm a sinner. I open my heart to you. Save me, and I will serve you with all my heart. Welcome to God's encouragement. Creation in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas 76043 or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.